So we finally see the grand opening of Heavenly Beauty Supply Store. And I must say, I really enjoyed the fashion show. And it's really good to see people have multiple streams of income, particularly black people. Because, you know, we've been cut out of the access to wealth for, you know, centuries. And I'm proud to see that. But outside of heavenly segment of this episode, I have some things to say that are going to be some criticism. So let's get into it. This is Miss Anna Little Cool's review of Married to Medicine Season 9, Episode 2. Hey everyone, I'm back. And if you are new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to receive future notices of uploads, commentary, reviews, as well as lives. Also, like, share, and comment. So I'm going to get into this review for season nine, episode two of one of my favorite reality shows, Married to Medicine. And yes, I saw this episode today and I am very proud that I reviewed this in so much order and it makes sense and it's clean. My notes are organized and I'm just proud of this because I haven't really reviewed a lot of shows and I've wanted to do this since I first joined YouTube five years ago. So we're going to start with the first segment and I have about... Eight. So the first segment is Dr. Jackie's medical office with Dr. Heavenly meeting her because she has a concern pertaining to her reproductive health. So Heavenly tells Jackie, you know, I know that you your door is locked, but I need to talk to you. So Dr. Jackie opens the door and she tells her, I have not had my period in two months. And Dr. Jackie tells her, well, it could be, you know, your menopause and, you know, you are at that age. And Dr. Heavenly is like, but I could also be expecting twins. I could be pregnant. But honestly, I also, you know, I have been losing interest in, 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 in sex. But, you know, I still put it in my mouth. Heavenly, we didn't need to know all that. So we go back to three years ago when they was on a a trip with like their husbands and and they basically said, you know, I I, I put it, I I put it in my mouth like daddy wants me to because that's how daddy likes it. And Dr. Damon was so embarrassed, but Dr. Heavenly was talking and I'm going to say something about that. I believe Dr. Heavenly does this because Dr. Heavenly I personally think wants to seem really cool like the rest of the women. She's not like that, probably, at home. But she wants them to not look at her as a dull woman. That's what that's about. So, Dr. Jackie basically says, you know, your estrogen, we're going to see if, I'm going to take blood because I'm going to see if your estrogen levels increase. And we're going to see what we can do so that we can see how much estrogen is needed, how much those testosterone will be needed because you may need to be balanced. So Dr. Heavenly's like, I'm not ready to be part of the mature club. And, you know, Dr. Heavenly, Dr. Jackie takes her blood work and it goes from there. She's going to let her know. So then we get to Dr. Contessa's home and her daughter Layla is playing with her older sister. I think her older sister's name is Lauren. And what happens is that Toya approaches the driveway and the children. I think one of her son's names is Aiden. One of her son's names are Aiden and the other one I don't remember. But Layla says, oh, there goes the good one and the devil. So, Contessa's like, you can't say that. You can't call that. She was like, well, I went to their house before, Mommy, and I played with them. And he was like a devil. Now, I'm going to tell you something about Layla. Layla is one of those little girls that's headstrong. And she's tough. 
And she going to grow up to be, I feel, an attorney. I don't believe she's going to go into medicine. She's going to go into being an attorney, but she's also going to become an athlete. Whereas her sister is more like dainty, but she's, that's a, that's a tough little cookie. Which is a great thing because nobody's going to push her over. So, Toya basically, now this got me pissed. Toya says, you call my, my children a devil? They are angels. I have them posted up on the bulletin board in my house. Um, Toya, last week you was was telling both of them off because one of them was taking the elevator and the other one threw the bag out with the with the gifts. And you was upset with both of them. So don't try to front like your children are quote unquote angels. You just mad because Layla calls your children the devil. That's what you mad at. You mad because that little girl is smart and she know how to talk back. And you will not be able to run game on her. Okay? Like you ran game on Eugene. Okay? So they sitting down and they're talking about the top topic of this season which is heavenly's youtube channel okay i like dr heavenly's youtube channel and she talks about everything she don't just talk about married to medicine the cast but that's what most people tune in for so contessa is upset because she's still not speaking to her because she talked about the relationship between her husband and and her and how she thinks that she's being abused emotionally and I believe also mentally so Latoya is basically saying you know you have this blog as in reference to heavenly and she doesn't think she's you don't think you're being disrespected being disrespectful and Toya said, I was trying to tell you that Heavenly is a snake. And I'm going to tell you something. She won't apologize, but she will do it again. And Dr. Heavenly said last week on her blog, I would apologize, but I'm going to do it again. So I'm not going to apologize. So really, Contessa is, you know, she's upset. She's still not dealing with her. And so we go on to Anila's home. And Dr. Kieran's home. Because, you know, Dr. Kieran's home, let's keep it real, he really paid for that mansion. Let's be honest. So, they preparing to get their children to school. The nanny, Miss Gomez, she basically makes bacon and eggs. And she tells Anila that, you know, they got to get to school. So, they're going to eat this in the car. Anila drives them to school. And she has a difficult time balancing. And she's like, without Miss Gomez and nanny, I, I'm not going to be able to function because... I put in 40 to 60 hours a week for blogging, you know, on clothes and beauty. And I'm nervous about the work-life balance, but I love my career at the same time. Now, here's the thing, Anila. Anila, Anila, Anila. And I really like Anila. The nanny is not supposed to be the second mother the nanny is supposed to help you with the children while you are focusing on the job the nanny has to also have a life outside of to help working for you the nanny should only work no more than 40 hours a week the nanny should not be working on the weekends. You're working 40 to 60 hours blocking. Okay? So that means, let's say you're doing 60 a week. That means, sorry, 60 by 5. That's 12 hours a day on the weekdays. Your children are going to be absorbed with the nanny and they're not going to really be around you. And there's going to be that disconnect, especially when they grow up because they're going to look at that nanny as their mom. They'll look at their father as their father, 
but you're going to be cut out. And there's a lot of women who have nannies and they end up regretting getting a nanny because their children respond to the nanny more than the mother because the nanny does the raising. And that's the downside. And we're going to see the downside about that towards the end of the episode. So now we go to Quad's home. And Quad's home, as always, fabulous Quad. She's got it. She's got it. So Quad is getting ready to take Mason to school. And her mother helps him go over the sight words. And he smells like out loud he's in the first grade. And so... Quad basically is like, you know, I feel like my life has been, you know, upside down, changed. And it's kind of like a sitcom. And then we get this corny spoof called Quad and the Family. And it's like, kind of look like the Family Matters starring Quad, introducing Mason and Miss Mary as Quad's mother. I was saying, you know what? Y'all play too much on Mary to Medicine and on um, the housewives y'all always do these little montages and these little spoofs which is clever because it's like throwing shade but i will say with bravo shows they're more interesting and more creative as opposed to vh1 whereas vh1 focuses on the ratchet stuff bravo will you know try to make it to a point family friendly as possible or you know not as ratchet PG-13. So, she prepares breakfast and she has Mason to thank Jesus for, you know, the food and stuff. So, she drives him to school every day because Mason does not like the bus. Mason does not want to take the bus. But she tells Mason, I drive you to school, but you still got on that bus. He was like, I hate it. He can't stand the noise. And he says that the children behave they behave very much like banshees they're very rowdy now i'm gonna say this i totally have empathy with mason when it comes to the bus although i grew up in new york city the first two years i took the bus to school from first grade to second grade and i tell you when you taking the bus with older kids it can be scary and I always had my friend Jenny, Jennifer, sitting next to me or some of the other kids my age. And I always sat in the front. The back was the older kids. And the back, the kids in the back were the loudest. And then you guys with the kids from the other schools on the school buses flipping the bird at you. And that's a whole nother, you know, thing. So I ended up like, you know, if I see somebody doing that to me, I'm going to do it to them. And like... Uh uh-uh, uh, because we're not going to deal with this disrespect. And I was so happy I got to take the actual NTA bus to school from grades three to, I believe it was, I think it was ninth grade or tenth grade. And then I took the train. Now, I didn't dislike taking a bus if it was kids around like my age group, anywhere from like five to like eight years old. But those, um, 11 12 and 13 year olds oh no so i understood that and so quad's like you know at times he wears her thin but she loves him and she wouldn't live without him and i thought that was really sweet so then we get to heavenly preparing for the grand opening of heavenly beauty supply store and she wants a 360 and a red carpet outside the party planner jen is going to provide that which she does and she was going to have a fashion show to show off her hair products and she's doing this because she just said she got a lot of doubters. And she's going to show people that she can do anything. And she do have doubters. Particularly Toya. And my thing with Toya is, what have you done in the nine years that you've been on this show? Except for get three different houses, fight Mariah, and stress out Dr. Eugene. That's it. And I like Toya, but Toya, you know, it is what it is. So we see Dr. Simone and Cecil, and they go to this restaurant called The Mad Italian. And they're going there to meet up with Miles, who's 23 years old. He's still in college. And meet up with his girlfriend named 
Andrea. Andrea, I believe. How I pronounce her name? Andrea. So they've been together for a year and a half. And they have a great relationship. And Miles is studying Japanese astronomy. And I think Andrea is Japanese. I could be wrong. So they order the chicken Alfredo. Miles orders that. And Andrea orders the shrimp Alfredo. And Cecil and Dr. Simone orders the pasta Leah. So they're discussing the relationships. And Miles basically tells his family, like, you know, I'm better at compromising more than my girlfriend. And Andrea says, well, I'm a better communicator than Miles because Miles is nonchalant. Now I'm going to say something, okay? It's really interesting that Miles has an Asian girlfriend. And I could see him with an Asian girlfriend because Miles is quiet. And this goes back to the whole, you know, statement that was made online by a YouTuber that I listen to a lot. Why is it that the children of successful black parents end up in interracial relationships? Something isn't right inside that home at times. Now, it could be where they really like the person because I really think that he likes her. I think he really loves her. But what I also think is the men and the young men really don't want to be with a black woman. And there's some trauma with having a black mom with some of these boys. And I think their fathers take them behind closed doors and tell them to get you, not necessarily a white woman, because that may take your mom off, but get you, you know, an Asian or Hispanic girl. But don't get a black girl. Don't do it. She'll bring you down. So that's something. So they basically, as in Cecil and Dr. Simone, they're planning to write a couple's book. So they're given a timeline of like the history of their marriage from the time they met in college. Because they, because Cecil went to Morehouse, Simone went to Spelman. I don't think they even joined fraternities, but they would they would party on campus. And so chapter one is the good times. You saw the renewal and vows. Chapter two was the bad times. Dealing with the whole, the woman. I think her name was Tammy. He was seeing a woman named Tammy. Then chapter three was faith. And that was at the reunion. And then chapter four was healing. So the book is going to be based on solutions to succeeding at a marriage. That's like the premise of the book. And... Cecil wants to be on Red Table Talk and Oprah. Red Table Talk, that's a that's a goal, realistic goal. But Oprah, no. You know why? Because the Oprah show went off 11 years ago, Cecil. And this proves the theory that I've been saying that they live and they're stuck in the 90s, in the early 2000s. The Oprah show went off in 2011. Why would you want to go on an Oprah show? There's no Oprah show. The... the you can say what you want about Jackie and, and Curtis, but they are more present than Cecil and Dr. Simone. So now we're going to go to what I was talking about earlier with Anila and Dr. Karen. So they get home and they are approached with a surprise dinner that was prepared by Mrs. Gomez. So it's exquisite, you know, I believe it was like sirloin steak, potatoes with, you know, I believe it was asparagus, wine. And they're like, okay, what's going on? She has something to tell us. She probably wants a raise. Okay. So she tells them. I'm officially moving back to Houston because my family needs me. And Anila is sidetracked. And he's like, whoa. And Anila is upset because it's like, I can't function without you. I can't, I can't do it. I can't balance motherhood and a career. It, I mean, is there anything we can do for you to stay? She was like, no, my family needs me. Like, I love that your kids, but I really also need to be with my family. They need me too. In other words, I made all the money I need living out here in Atlanta. But I'm going back to Houston. That's what it was. She came there for money. And she got, she stacked her paper. And it's like, adios. 
but I'm going back to Houston, Texas. That's what it was. It was a job. And this is why I said what I said earlier in this review. You can't depend on a nanny all the time. You have to also still be available to raise your children. Because now, Avir, who's nine years old, who's four years old, and Ariana, who's seven, they bonded with her. They shouldn't have to depend on an outside family member. Now, if you had a nanny who was like a cousin to the family, that's what you should get. Because if I was, if I was, if I had children and I needed a nanny, I would get a family member because that's family. I wouldn't get an outside person. I would not do it. And so they are upset. Even Dr. Karen was upset. And usually Dr. Karen and Anila are not on the same page. So for that to happen, you know that was serious. So now we head to Toya and Contessa. They go into the grand opening. And Contessa is like, you know, I'm going to be there, but I'm not going to talk to her. So Toya is like, you know, I get it. I get it. So Toya is like, she's never going to stop dragging her friends online until we all cut her off. And so Simone is like, says in the confessionals, I'm not surprised that um, Heavenly is talking about people online because that's what she do. That's what she do. So we're at the red carpet of the fashion show for the grand opening of Heavenly Beauty. And Dr. Damon and Dr. Heavenly take photos. And Gary with the T is there. As well as Miss Juicy. And Dr. Jackie is selling Volition, which is a skin serum. And it's also available at Neiman Marcus, Ulta Beauty, and even Canada. And I gotta say, Dr. Jackie and Dr. Heavenly are very good friends. But I don't care what nobody say. I think Dr. Jackie subliminally controls Dr. Heavenly. And I'm going to get to that later on this season. But she's the only one that can calm Dr. Heavenly down. Nobody else can besides Daddy. So, Dr. Heavenly's wig is a ginger wig. And she going to try to tell Quad, this is how you walk in hills. And Quad's like, Heavenly. Man, I'm going to remind you, like, two years ago, you couldn't walk in hills. And so, Heavenly is feeling herself. She dipping low. She bouncing and everything. And it was like, you know, we may need to call an orth- we may need to have a we, we may need to have an orthopedic doctor on call. Because this ain't working. Now, here's the thing that's pissed me off. While Quad and Dr. Jackie was preparing to put the hair on, Quad hated it. She called it the predator. Allura is wearing the 613 platinum blonde wig. Now, here's my thing. Last week, I said what I said. Alora is looking a little bit too grown. And instead of Heavenly talking about her friends online, you need to pump your brakes with Alora Because it's too grown. It's just too, too, too grown. She was giving me P Valley. And I hate to say because she's a child. She's six, seven, 16 going on 17. She was giving me P Valley. Keyshawn. M I crickle letter, crickle letter, I crickle letter, crickle letter, I humpback, humpback, I, 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 I. No, it was just too much. Had it been a brown then fine. But the blonde, no. Mm-mm, no. 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 So the fashion show is about to start, and then the contractor comes. His name is Mr. Wright. He owns 25 spots where the... I can't stand saying the word, but the place where... The Daily Departed 
reside before they are being before they are finalized and go into the earth, back to the earth. That's all I'm gonna say. So he got 25 of them spots. And so she gets the wig contract, you know, and she was like, and you could tell that he works, that he he's in that business because his energy was very, very, very creepy to me. Like I started like tingling and I don't usually do that. And if you know me, for all those that know me, I never walk past those places. I don't do it. I can't. Mm -mm. I can't do it. I can't. I I can't stand it at all. So now the fashion show starts. And Heavenly basically announces it. It's called the Evolution of Heavenly. And she wears her ginger wig that she models. Then we have Jackie. Her wig is called Miss Everything. Then Quad. It's quad. She gives it her oil. And Anila is spraying the whole place. And Anila just walked on her own. She wasn't in the fashion show. And then Doc, I mean, Alora models the 613 platinum blonde wig. And Toya, well, first, Contessa says it's a mess. Toya says that Jackie's wig looked like it was a strip, a wig for strippers. And Toya says the whole thing, the wigs are cheesy. And it's great that she got the contracts because if anybody needs to, you know, bury somebody with a wig like that, they could easily get a cheesy wig. And I'm like, Toya, you still got to throw the shade. Like, you should have opened a beauty supply store. You know? But anyway, Heavenly wants the group picture. Contessa don't want to talk to her. Toya's like, just talk to her. But they all take the group picture together, even um, Carrie. They didn't show Carrie walking, from what I believe. But Carrie was there to support. And like I said, Carrie trying to get back on her show. And I'm here for it. Because I like Carrie from season one. But Mariah is the reason why she wasn't back on the show. Even though she was a friend in season two. But I don't think Mariah will ever be back on that show. And I'm going to tell you something. With Mariah not being there... Season 8 was really good. I feel like Mariah and that drama with Quad, not that now that it's no longer there, I feel the show is gelling pretty good. Now, the Mariah fans will say different, but hey, I'm, I have nothing against Mariah. But I just think that Mariah and Lisa, they were both kind of, yeah, it's a lot with them. I'll talk about that on another segment. But that's my... Review for Married to Medicine, Season 9, Episode 2. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm still, you know, practicing, getting, being comfortable with this. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. Also, hit the notification bell to receive future uploads on commentaries, reviews, as well as lives. Also, like, comment, share. I'll be back later. And take care and have a Good rest of the day.